Our client's objective was to relocate the drag line in the least number of loads in order to minimize our overall cost consisting of the disassembly, hauling, assembly, and downtime of their equipment. Load 1 was the tri-structure, net weight on it, 490,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight of 786,800 pounds, overall dimensions, length was 215 feet 4 inch, width at 48 feet 3 inch, height 26 foot 10 inch. Load number 2 was a boom top with a net weight of 500,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight of 780,000 pounds, Overall dimensions, length was 241 feet 6 inch, width at 35 feet, height at 31 foot 1 inch, then 26 foot 10 inch with the power towers lowered. Load number 3 was a boom butt, the net weight of 310,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight of 453,400 pounds, overall dimensions 177 foot 4 inch, width of 35 foot, height of 30 feet 11 inch, and lowered height of 27 foot 8 inch with the power towers lowered. Load number 4, the rev frame's front half, had a net weight of 1,400,000 pounds, a gross vehicle weight of 2,173,600 pounds, with overall dimensions of a length of 296 feet 7 inch, a width 19 foot 8 inch, and the height, 15 foot, 6 inch. Load number five, the rev frame rear half, had a net weight of 1,400,000 pounds. Gross vehicle weight, 2,173,600 pounds. With overall dimensions at a length of 296 feet, 7 inch, width, 70 feet, and a height, 24 feet, 0 inch. Load 6, a roof panel front half at a net weight of 150,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight of 401,200 pounds, overall dimensions, a length of 122 feet 9 inch, width 39 feet, and a height of 19 foot 8 inch. Load 7, the roof panel rear half had a net weight of 100,000 pounds, Gross vehicle weight, 351,200 pounds. Overall dimensions, length was 122 feet 9 inch, width 51 feet 7 inch, height 19 feet 8 inch. The majority of equipment manufacturers we work with on this project are SCNRA members. We utilize 36 lines of Shirley Intercombi platform trailers in four different configurations, including four file, with axle load limits of 37 metric tons per line, allowing us to safely move loads of this magnitude. On some of the larger loads, we used up to five Kenworth and Peterbilt prime mover tractors in order to maintain adequate pulling and braking capacities. Other equipment utilized were Trail King heavy haul trailers for mobilization as well as a large fleet of escort vehicles and utility vehicles. Regulatory approvals and the planning consisted of multiple route surveys, meeting with utility companies and law enforcement, escorts, engineered heavy haul diagrams, AutoCAD drawings, bonding of the highways, special permitting through Converse County and the state of Wyoming, and consistent meetings with the client. This amounted to 1,200 hours in planning and regulatory approvals. Physical challenges on the project included the terrain and the weather. The relocation took place between two coal mines on state highways, county roads, and gravel roads with severe grades of up to 14%. At times, inclement weather included high winds, severe rain, and 100-year floods, twice in one month, which resulted in road closures. We held meetings with the county and state to mitigate a project stoppage and to meet our planned delivery dates. We utilized five trucks for this project here to uh, safely have the pulling power and the braking power. We had two uh, grades there in the mine. One was a short distance of about a quarter of a mile, a 14% grade down a hill. And we had one coming up on the dragline pad that was 14% for about a half a mile. We utilized five trucks for this project here to make sure that we had plenty of braking power and traction to make this move and make this move safely.
safety is our culture. This project was completed with zero incidents, zero injuries, and zero recordables. Daily safety meetings started each and every day of the project and included energy transportation personnel, subcontractors, and client employees. All personnel on the project were experienced at their tasks, proving their abilities with similar projects in the past. Training included MSHA, OSHA, DOT compliance, and site-specific orientations. The project required two supervisors, including Billy Mead, our operations manager with 27 years with the company, and Donnie Masters, a field manager with 16 years with energy transportation. All equipment was inspected and maintained on a daily basis as part of the company policy. Utilization of custom engineered and fabricated power towers to fit below overhead obstructions and power lines. Utilization of up to five prime mover tractors to handle towing and braking capabilities on up to 14% grades. Utilization of power utility vehicles and personnel to raise overhead power lines. Utilization of pilot vehicles to safely control traffic. Utilization of oak and composite matting to cross soft roadways and to mitigate crushing of underground lines and piping. Maintained low speeds to help prevent tire blowouts due to high temperatures. Also, service vehicles followed each and every load in order to maintain equipment throughout the completion of the project. The execution of this project included 3,500 total man hours. Ingenuity and innovations used on the project included custom engineered and fabricated power towers that were utilized to gain access underneath overhead obstructions and power lines without the need for removal of existing utilities and structures. The routing approvals for this project included 87 power line crossings, several of which were 230,000 volts, requiring us to keep a safe distance away from the loads. Due to overall heights, we found the need to design and build custom power towers to maintain clearances below the power lines and overhead structures, as well as ground clearance above roadside obstructions such as road signs, delinear posts, and guardrails. The power towers at Energy Transportation and Custom Concepts created allowed us to maneuver these obstructions while maintaining our scope and scheduled delivery dates, also allowing us to save costs for our client and the state of Wyoming. Brandon and I came up with the idea of uh, building these power tower assemblies that we could raise and lower the loads, raise the loads to get over the structures and lower the load to get underneath the power lines. Let's see, the entire assembly was all fabricated to sit on top of a steerable trailer that was run like a dolly under the tail of the tall end on each of the boom sections. And then everything on top would swivel, pivot, and then had the the five-foot raisable power towers when the entire load was suspended bridged over all of that. With everything bridged when it was in the raised position, the dolly section could rotate, could steer, and then it could raise and lower on its own. The entire thing could drop five feet to get the entire load to ground level to meet the height requirements that, that the power lines could be pushed to. Brandon came up with this really slick idea, a device that would carry the block in the air so that you would never have your hand in harm's way as you uh, raised and lowered the power tires, which made it extremely safe. We also developed a plan with Converse and Campbell Counties, as well as the state of Wyoming, to build and install hinged highway signs. This plan allowed us to remove a pin and lay signs over to gain clearance of wide loads without damaging surrounding property. Once loads had passed, signs were tilted back to vertical position and repinned. 